All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Luca Dot Shop. We are here for the fourth Grand Prix weekend here in Azerbaijan at the Baku City Circuit. Uh, it looks like we're going to be having wet qualifying and a dry race, so the grid's probably going to be a bit jumbled up, but uh, looking at us, you know, we're, we're looking fine on the performance standings, you know, we are ahead of Racing Point, Toro Rosso, Alfa Romeo and Williams at the minute, uh, and we are definitely on our way to passing us and Renault so that's a good shout we've currently got nothing in development we're gonna have a look here and gonna do a cheeky little upgrade so coming into this race uh, we've only got one front downforce we haven't have we don't have any rear downforce uh, but what I've been spending my money on is uh, efficiency for the engine and quality control for the engine department um, because we're going to be making a lot of upgrades over this uh, series so we need to you know make it cheaper for us uh, and make it more you know reduce the failure chance so we're going to go ahead and get uh, redesigned pistons that result in less engine friction and more finely tuned combustion thereby increasing power so we're going to develop that it's going to come in for spain um give us a little another edge over renault it's funny how we're in a renault engine but our engine is better than renault's like we've made our mclaren improvements as per usual but as you can see williams has the second best engine on the grid uh, all because of uh, the mercedes spec um ferrari then their academy uh, the three Ferraris in their academy then Red Bull then me then Renault then Toro Rosso so yeah that's that uh, but yeah I'll see you guys in qualifying alright guys we are back here at qualifying we're going to jump straight to it um, all the practice programs have been done except for uh, I think it was ERS management um, I got a bit stalled with uh, all the practice programs like, but I just want to jump into the qualifying. And plus, we don't really need to manage ERS the when it's on our mic, with but practice, yeah. But this is still going to be a difficult um, session for our drivers as they fight for pole position. Welcome as to you can see, so it's going to be it's gonna be difficult, yeah. See what we can so, do. could be a tasty one today then, Ants. We've got all the ingredients, that's for sure. Treacherous conditions, an ever-changing racetrack, and one or two cars just behind the pace setters who maybe, just maybe, fancy a bit of an upset after a good performance from them in free practice. And the question has to be, of course, what is that circuit going to look like in 10 to 15 minutes from now? If you think the rain's going to get worse, then you have to be straight out when the lights go green to find whatever grip you can. But if it eases off, then you're better off waiting, saving the tyres, and going out at the perfect moment. The other thing that comes with these conditions? Traffic. And the lack of visibility that comes from sitting in the spray. It's going to be a constant problem, and I expect to see a lot of frustrated drivers with ruined laps out there today. Yeah, so they're right. So we're going to have a look straight at the session, have a look and it looks like it's going to stay um, light rain for the remainder of this session so we're just going to go out now have have a cheeky lap we haven't changed anything to the car because um, i don't want to give any up any speed in the corners and that's where we're best at so i'd rather be slow on a straight and just be able to get like a tow off another car than be uh, fast in a straight line myself and not be able to turn effectively so go coming down the back straight about to start the flying lap and here we go so we're gonna break downshift five times take it in easy Oh 
I'm already getting quite of a um, quite a understeery feel. Just trying to warm up my tires. Uh, it's not the best when you have to warm up your tires in the wet conditions like that. It's absolutely terrible because you know you're just going to be catching the car if you if you're too early on your throttle outside the corner. Just like that to catch you too quick on the throttle. That is wide. That is wide. I need to have crude my own lap. That's cool. If it takes too much damage. And now I'm not gonna be able to go flat out ish. Down the back straight. Or through the end of this and that Lap's ruined. The lap's ruined. <sighs> okay, take it easy on the car. We can't sustain this level of damage. Let's get off the racing line. Get off the racing line. So we're just going to go again and see if that next lap is any better. to your wing, suggest we box to change it. We have to replace that front wing, box now. to spend time repairing the damage to the car.
Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Baku City Circuit then, an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. Joining me for the Grand Prix once again is Anthony Davidson. Can we begin by having a chat about Charles Leclerc? That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Hamilton, Max Verstappen, and Hulkenberg, Grosjean, Magnussen, Butler, and Daniel Ricciardo, Perez, Gasly, Lucas Faber, and Norris, Albon, Raikkonen, Robert Kubica, and George Russell, Giovinazzi, and Bell. And now, it's time to head down to the track. All right, guys, so this is post-com loop. This was the uh, original attempt at me going for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It was all going well up until this point. We're on lap three, I think it is. Uh, very early in the race. And uh, as you can see, George Russell is all over my behind. Uh, Raikkonen had some damage, so he's coming into the pits. George Russell pulls alongside me, comes in front of me, which is fine, and boom, brake tested me. For no fucking reason. It's because George Russell is a little bitch, alright? Just letting you guys know. So uh, I restarted the session, uh, basically. So this is what you're seeing now. So I put up the, the strategy I was using. And uh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Azerbaijan Grand Prix qualifying. Went shit. Here we go. One red light, two red light, three red right, four red right, five red light. And lights out and away we go. It's an okay start. Uh, Raikkonen or, or Giovinazzi getting stuck there uh, in the early gears with a little bit of wheel spin. But I can't say much for myself. Going to be a little bit cautious into turn one. We don't want anything happening. Now we go three wide into turn two with Raikkonen and Kubica. Almost got the move done on Giovinazzi uh, and using my McLaren engine, but he's got that Ferrari engine. He's beating my ass on the fucking straights uh, as we break as late as possible. Catch up to Raikkonen and Giovinazzi is on the behind, and we just squeeze him out in time for turn four. Uh, and as we come through turn four, everything's going Gucci. You know, we didn't we didn't qualify where we wanted to qualify. However. Hopes were high. Hopes were high as long as George Russell didn't fucking break testers again. You know, hopefully this race would go well. Uh, you know, obviously it's going to be like a train here at Azerbaijan in the opening few laps up until the leaders kind of pull away and the midfield kind of drop back. Coming up castle section. Loving the feel of the car through there. Um... Uh, Jeff's just letting me know a nice start, even though I've only gone up one position coming through here, flat out through both of the flat out left handers, as I've already said, flat out four times now. Anyway, over the kerb, up to the wall, losing a bit of speed, not too bad. We're going to break late once again because we've got a tiny bit of clean air in front of us as Raikkonen's pulling away, but anyway, I'm, I'm balls deep in, in fucking... Going flat out, mate. You fucking what, mate? Right, fucking flat out through there. 195, and and that's effectively all this fucking McLaren car's got. Unless you've got slipstream, DRS right, and a fucking jet engine on your back. As Fernando Alonso once said, if you put a gen jet engine on this McLaren car, it won't go any faster. Right, <laughs> So here we come into the second lap of the Grand Prix. Kibitz is in front of him. I'm hoping to get a little bit of tow because he's got that Mercedes engine. He's got the second best engine on the grid. So I'm thinking, well, if I can use Kibitz, huh? 
pull up alongside Kibitza, past Kibitza, before the start finish highway, as all of us like to know, as we go wide into turn five, oh my gosh, and that plan got thrown out the window. Um, just like a cigarette end in the 50s when people were smoking out of bathroom windows. Uh, anyway, moving swiftly on, uh, past addictions, we're coming into sector two and through castle section. Um, yeah, like I said, confident through castle section, didn't have the best, and oh my gosh, I almost binned it! I almost fucking binned it, and Antonio Giovinazzi, the Italian man in the Italian car, decides he's gonna go up my inside, and not in the sexual way, because I wouldn't be down for that. Anyway, I am very sure of Terry. Terry is my girlfriend, right? My girlfriend's just asking me if I would enjoy an inside. I wouldn't, okay? I wouldn't. No. Alright, uncomfortableness. Anyway, we go balls deep once again in flat out! Look at that! M McLaren sticks to the floor like a fucking Gorilla Glue, mate. Like, you put that McLaren on the floor, right, and what happens, what happens, right, is it sticks to the floor, but it doesn't even matter if you've got the most downforce in the world. If you don't have a Ferrari engine, you're fucked. Anyway, as, as we come into turn three now, T turn three, lap three, fuck me, Luke. It's only turn fucking two. Uh, we go for a switchback move, immediately getting really decent acceleration. It looked like Antonio Giovinazzi got a bit bogged down there in some of the gears he was passing through, so it allowed us to pull alongside and stay with him. And, of course, I am like Danny Rick. I am lit on the brakes. I make moves round the outside, round the inside, and that's front wing damage. How is that front wing damage? If 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 one of you boffins right at the McLaren HQ can tell me how the fuck that's wing damage, I'll happily give you a tenner. I'll, I will happily give you a tenner. If one of you boffins send me a DM on YouTube and be like, "Yo, Liquid Hotshot, right? You got front wing damage because you're a cunt," I'd give you a tenner. But if you're not from the McLaren HQ, then you can't do that. But anyway, um. It's only a little bit of front wing damage. It's not the end of the world. Not yet. Uh, as we come once again flat out through sector two in both of the sweeping flow left handers. And this race, I felt really bad for myself because <clears throat> I didn't feel bad for myself. I kind of felt bad for you guys because effectively you guys have got to watch this, right? And, and you guys are probably sat here with some crumpets, right? With, with a fucking cup of Yorkshire tea, right? Probably maybe sat with your missus after having a nice evening meal, right? And and you're looking at my footage and you're like, fam, you had a shit qualifying and, and you're currently having a shit race. Well, I'll tell you something, bro, right? I increased the difficulty to 75 and I realised after this race that that was too much. Whilst, yes, I am decent at the wheel, I am not 75 difficulty worthy on the wheel yet. I think I've turned it down to to 60 or 65, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but this race, honestly, it was a pain in my ass. Like, with that George Russell setback, I could have done it an hour earlier. I got pissed off because of it, and I came back to it like an hour later. And I thought, well, it needs to, it needs to be done tonight so I can move on uh, with the Grand Prix. Uh, stuff and things uh, as we come through uh, to the end of sector one into sector two. I don't know, like I break late coming into sa uh, effectively ca into castle uh, into the castle section itself um, to try and get as much speed out of it. You flick down one gear into turn uh, into second gear, and then you get the acceleration out through. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know. Like I've said multiple times, this video, the Ferrari engine and the Mercedes engine is is nothing to be fucking, um, not to be. You have to be scared of it, effectively. Like it, the AI is already ridiculous in this game, and the fact that they've got engines that just seem like fucking rocket ships, not not jet engines. No, 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 no. 
you need a fucking rocket ship on the back of this fucking McLaren, right? To even get fucking above 200 miles an hour on this back straight. Like, I'm telling you that much right now. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to jump cut now. Uh, enough of me rambling. I'm going to jump cut to me making some excitement. Or hopefully it's exciting in for you. At least as I as my voice is going. Uh, because I've been talking. Uh, but yeah, uh, as we get DRS on these two who are fighting in front of us. So yeah, see you guys in a minute. So we come back a little bit later on. Two laps later. Uh, lap 7. Some of the midfielders have made pit stops. So the likes of Perez is currently behind me. And I'm currently behind a Toro Rosso as well. And uh, we come in towards the back, uh, the, the start finish straight uh, for lap 8 out of 13. Uh, only got 5 laps left here as going flat out through here. I lift off a bit but go full lock and I still hit the wall. Lost my front wing so Jeff's like, yo cuz, yo cuz, do you want a front wing? I'm like, fuck yeah I do. Fuck yeah. A bit, a bit, a little bit earlier than um, what I would have liked, because um, I think the strategy was to stop at like lap nine. It's a little bit early, but you know the soft tires can stretch. So here we go, put on a front wing, get my softs on, and here we go. We didn't get held up in the pit lane, which is absolutely tremendous. Uh, I do believe that Sebastian Vettel who's in front of me yeah Sebastian Vettel who's in front of me and I, we did have I think we had a retirement no we didn't have a retirement it was actually the pop-up that came up earlier was I think that uh, El Chucatoro Lando or in other words Lando Norris my teammate at McLaren uh, he came into the pits so that's what I got like um a, a pop up at the top of my screen in the orange and oh my gosh I've spun it I've, I've I've spun it and I almost banged it in the wall pressing the wrong fucking side of my steering wheel uh, and yeah at this point nothing happened uh, the, I, I couldn't catch up with the with the mid table guys even after making my one and only pit stop so far um, and yeah, that's a, that that that's the race. As I go and put it in another wall, and this this race was going from bad bad, bad to worse. Um, but but yeah, I'll I'll come back to you on the final lap and basically end end your guys suffering. Um, yes, <laughs> see you in a minute. So uh, as we come through here, we actually made uh, a second pit stop. Um, on lap 10 for another front wing after banging it in the wall there uh, wasn't the best of races for me um, I was absolutely living in the cockpit but at the same time I was like this race needs to be finished I'm not restarting it under any circumstances I don't like doing that um, simple as um, yeah, as Valtteri Bottas. Bottas is very good round Azerbaijan in real life and on the game. Uh, as Valtteri Bottas picks up the checkered flag, as I'm not even out of fucking sector one yet at the last lap. So, give it maybe five more laps, he probably would have lapped me um, because of the horrific pace I had round here, uh, and I just I didn't feel comfortable. Like, I felt comfortable at the start, but then as soon as I binned it the first time, uh, well, I say the first time, I mean like the second time, like after I'd, after I'd messed up with Raikkonen, um, and like I actually like took off half of my front wing, uh, before I came into the pits, you know, through the flower right-handers, and as you can see there, another a love tap to the wall, uh, and yeah this this race really did go from bad to worse and I was not happy whatsoever and yeah it, it wasn't the best of results but we could only in F1 you can only hope that the next race is going to be better than the last um, and in this case Spain is next and I like Spain so hopefully 
Spain goes well as we come to the fucking start finish line in 20th of 20th not moving up the grid from qualifying and that was the least eventful race Jeff was absolutely livid. He was like, "It's not fucking good enough, all right, all right, more. It's not fucking good enough." Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, Mercedes coming out with another win here in in career mode, and um, yeah, I I think I did do a downforce update before the race, so that would come in effectively at Monaco, but I'm not sure if I actually did one. So yeah. Um, that's about it guys, I'll jump with you at the end of the video. Let's hope for a better race next time out, eh? So as you heard, Jeff wasn't exact. Uh, Chris, Jeff, whoever he's fucking called, wasn't the happiest with us. I thought Emma would have fucked us about, but anyway. After that race, we went into a contract negotiation, which is never a good thing to go into a contract negotiation after such a shit race like that. But I was confident that because we had performed in the earlier races, we had the pace to do the stuff and things. So I increase the expectation in race and qualifying. And I ask for a, I think it's pit stop. No, it's upgrade speed. Uh, but then I decide against it because I'm a cunt. Um, but then I go for simultaneous development and that, and it was just shortly over. So uh, I go ahead and uh, increase the expected position once again and it brings us under our value and allows us to get that negotiation, get the simultaneous development going and also get the uh, pit stop uh, speed going. But yeah guys, this has been an absolutely atrocious episode. Uh, I've made it under 30 minutes for you guys because there's no point you watching a full video if... You know, if if I've fucked it up effectively, and uh, that's the only word for it. But as you can see at the back end of this video, we do an aerodynamic upgrade, and two of them, I do believe. No, we did one. Or did we go back and do two? Yeah, I think I think we go back and do two aero um, to get that stuff done. But yeah, guys, uh, hope you've enjoyed. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.